intro to my first ever YouTube video. My name is Charlie, I'm 25 and I'm from Hertfordshire in England. I like all things creative, from upholstery, painting, upcycling, building things, turning trash to treasure and all things interior design. Today I'll be showing you how I turned an old, outdated and sad looking vintage chair into a sleek, chic statement piece for my home. In this video I will show you how I completely stripped down the chair and how I paint it using a chalk paint. I'll then show you how I reupholster it using a striped fabric and nail head trim. I do apologise in advance if any of the audio or footage isn't great. This is my first YouTube video and my first time getting to grips with recording and the editing software. Ok so let's get started. To begin with, I've placed the chair in an open, well ventilated area with plenty of working space around me. I've also rolled out a foam mat to protect the floor beneath. To start with, I'll need to remove the existing trim. This is what covers the line of staples which fix the fabric to the frame of the chair. With a pair of pliers and some force, I'm now pulling off all of the existing trim. tearing out all of the old fabric and foam. This is a very messy job with lots of dust and fibres from all the old materials. We don't want any of this in our lungs as it's harmful and dangerous so I'm wearing a mask throughout the strip down process. As you can see the foam is completely worn out and will need to be disposed of. I'll then be replacing this later. staples, I'll be tearing out the last of the fabric from the back of the chair. I'll now start lifting out and removing all of the old staples. Staples can be sharp, so it is advised to wear gloves throughout this process. Always face your upholstery tools away from you, and when lifting and pulling staples, be very cautious not to damage any of the wood or the frame around it. What we're looking to achieve here is a clean chair frame with no staples sticking out along the staple line. process is then repeated for the bottom half of the chair. After the trim has been removed, it's time to remove all of the old foam and fabric and staples. We will be settling the old foam aside to use as a template when cutting a new piece of foam later.
existing elasticated webbing on the chair is in very good condition, unlike all the foam and fabric. It holds up very well and shows almost no signs of wear or age, so I'll be keeping this intact. Again, here we are looking for a clean chair frame, free of any old staples along the staple line. sanding the surface with a fine grit sandpaper. This is to even out the surface and provide a key to the wood for painting. It's important not to gouge the wood or press too hard which can lead to damaging of the details throughout the frame. I'll be using elbow grease. This is a very good product for degreasing, removing any dust or dirt, and provides a good base for painting. Cleaning is essential prior to painting. What may seem to you like a relatively clean piece is often very dirty. harmful ingredients or chemicals whilst providing a strong and durable finish. I will also be using an oval brush by Frenchique to do so. When I'm painting furniture I like to flip the piece upside down and paint out all of the hidden and hard to paint areas first. Once this is done I'll turn the piece back upright and continue painting. This piece will require two coats for a full coverage. The first coat is expected to look a little patchy and uneven. After the first coat is given adequate time to dry, the second coat will provide full coverage and even out any patchy areas.
When painting a piece with lots of detail, I like to use a light sweeping motion across the surface. I don't load too much paint onto my brush. I simply lightly sweep the paint into the carvings and all the deeper details. Finishing off the second coat, as you can see the painted surface is looking nice and even with no patches. Now that the chair has been painted and has been given adequate time to dry and cure, I will now be measuring for fabric. I'll be upholstering the chair in a medium weight striped fabric suitable for upholstery use. If you're upholstering a piece which will have lots of use, it is advised to opt for a heavy weight upholstery fabric. Now that my fabric has been measured and cut, it's time to start upholstering. I'll be using my 8mm galvanised staples loaded into my pneumatic staple gun which is powered by my air compressor. Ensuring that my striped fabric is lined up correctly, I'll fix my first piece of fabric to the frame. It's really important to take your time here as you don't want the stripes to appear wonky or distorted. Keeping the fabric nice and taut across the frame, fire a line of staples along the staple line, keeping a centimetre or so between each one. It's very important not to overcrowd the staple line with too many staples. around any curved areas. This will help that the fabric sits right. It's now time to apply the webbing. This will provide substantial support for the back of the chair. Lining up my webbing over the grey stripes, I will staple to the frame whilst keeping things taut. By lining the webbing up with the grey stripes, this will make the webbing less visible from the back of the chair. I've opted for a 1 inch thick firm foam cup size. Lining the foam up to the frame around, I will apply a row of staples around the edge. After, I will then apply a layer of fibre before adding my fabric. This will then help achieve a softer and smoother finish. stripes of 
my frame, I will staple across the top. Then I will pull my fabric down nice and taut and staple along the bottom. Now that I am happy with how my fabric and stripes sit, I will anchor my fabric left and right. I will then staple around the entire upper staple line, ensuring that my fabric is kept taut and straight at all times. To line the base of my chair prior to foam, I will be using a strong heavyweight upholstery fabric. Here I will make several cuts in the fabric to fit around the two back posts. I will then pull my fabric taut and staple around the edge of the frame. Cutting off the excess as I go, I will then be ready for foam. tucking technique, I will pull and manipulate the foam and staple the foam along the frame. This will help give a softer and smoother finish. It's now time to add fabric. Making sure that all the stripes are lined up correctly and so that there is enough fabric to cover the seat, I begin by adding several cuts to fit the fabric around my two back posts. With my scissors lined up in the centre of my back post, I make one cut. At the top of this cut, I then clip a V in the fabric. This V shape allows the fabric to pass around either side of my post. After tucking and pulling my fabric through the back, I then staple along my staple line. It's very important at this stage to make sure that all the stripes are running straight and that there are no creases in my fabric. Towards my two outer corners. 
After this is done, I work on either side, pulling my fabric down. While stapling my fabric down, I'm constantly checking to make sure that my stripes are running straight and that there are no creases in my fabric. fabric, fold and staple down. I then work on my corner pleats. There are a number of ways to do corners, however this is my chosen way for this chair. I pull down at the corner, I fire one staple and then pull either sides in, creating a V-shaped pleat. scissors and trim off all the excess fabric, keeping closely to my staple line. I have chosen nickel plated nail head trim to finish off my chair. I line up my nail heads over the staple to hide them and neatly hammer in my nails to fasten the trim. I ensure that at all times I am keeping the nail heads as neat and as straight as possible. I then repeat this process on the top half of the chair to complete it. completed my chair transformation. I'm very happy with how it turned out. This vintage chair was a diamond in the rough. It had good bones and was a very solid piece. It just needed a bit of a facelift. It now sits perfectly in its new home. If you'd like to see more videos including upholstery, upcycling, building, sewing and interior design hacks then please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.